Difficulties. Hello, my name is Devin, and in this video, I'm gonna show you one of the driving forces of my live keyboard setup in Ableton, and that's this plugin here called ONTAP. So what ONTAP allows me to do is map as many hardware controls as I need, up to 16, and then access sounds within each button based on the number of times that I tap that button. So as you can see, I've mapped it to seven um, buttons. That's just the way I have it set up on my MIDI keyboard. And I usually have about three sounds within each button. So I have 21 sounds with these seven buttons, which is pretty handy. Now, um, to set it up, you just quickly map to the bank and to the taps. And now if I press one once, I should be getting this saw pad. Let's check it out. Yep, there it is. Um, I've got my cutoff mapped. I mean, I've got all sorts of other stuff mapped if I want it. Um, this is not my actual live setup. Sadly, it's not quite this beautiful, maybe one day. Um, but I kind of recreated it um, to show you what a live setup could look like and how easy it is to build. So we'll get there in just a second. Um, if I tap twice, we get a new sound. That's nice. We press it three times. Uh, and we get this buzz pad, which uses the expression pedal to modulate the cutoff. Um, so you might be wondering, wait, what's this plugin over here? That's a free plugin on my website, actually, um, that's just for hard mapping, modulation, and expression. Uh, why? You can check out another video for that um, if you're curious. So on tap, okay, so how does it work? Well, as you can see, multiple taps give you different things. If I move over to button two, I have a, I have a pad. Um, so say I want a different pad when I press it twice. Well, I have not dropped a pad here yet, but we go to 2.1, that's the pad I just played. 2.2, .2, and we've got this blank chain here. I'll delete it, and we'll just go in here and find, oh, look, it's like I was ready to do this. Seashore pad, what does that sound like? Tap twice. Oh, nice slow build. Some film score shit right there. Okay, so it was as simple as dragging and dropping a pad, and guess what? You don't even have to worry about CPU because all the device on-offs are mapped so that only when you're on that sound will it be activating um, that instrument. You know, just to give you a few more examples, in bank seven, I leave a uh, one tap blank so that I can quickly move from like my saw thing and then just move to a blank sound and then quickly move back rather than toggling on off with this switch here, which I'll talk about in a second. Two taps on number seven, I get strings. Um, by the way, I'm using a whirly sound. I'll switch to a piano sound. Beautiful, luscious strings. Volume is mapped to expression. Um, press three times, I get pizzicato. Right? I love A flat minor nine, if you can't tell. Okay. Yeah, bank four, I've got some leads. Um, you get the idea, right? And you can just drag and drop your sounds in here and there's nothing really much to worry about. Uh, another cool use is I use it to control an arpeggiator. So let's go back to this saw patch here. Um, one tap does nothing, it's just, um, that's like the off button essentially. Two taps is gonna turn on an arpeggiator. This is the default Ableton arpeggiator and when you use the sustain pedal, you get this kind of weird effect where it like sustains as many notes as it pol as the polyphony allows, I guess. Uh, it's a fun effect, but it's not really useful in a lot of contexts, right? So I triple tap and that activates this awesome Max for Live plugin that I found, which is a note holder. Boom. Don't even have to have my hands on the keyboards, uh, on the keyboard, on the keys. And it's gonna sustain that um, that patch. I haven't worked out a way to adjust the tempo of the arpeggiator, but um, it'd be as simple as you know, adding a knob to control the rate. Um, what was that, 82, I like that. Okay, so if I tap four times, then it turns off the arpeggiator and just turns on the note hold. Boom, love that. You know, so I can create some big fat stacks. Um, yeah, you get the idea. Um, one tap, turns it off. Okay, so that's kind of how I have my synth rack set up. That's, uh, that's the gist of it. Uh, real quick, I wanna talk about this sustain kill function. Um, because all of the device on offs are mapped to only be on when you're using that specific bank or that instrument, you can run into sustain issues if you were to just use this rack by itself. Um, yeah, and, that, and I meant to say that. You, you don't actually need this plugin. I mean, you could just manually map bank and taps and find your own way to control it. The one thing that will be kind of annoying though is that whenever you turn off 
a bank or, or an instrument rack while you're sustaining something, the next time you turn it on, it'll just keep sustaining. It's like it was it never left. And that can really ruin like uh, some special moments on gigs. And that's happened to me before. And that was a major part um, of building this plugin was like, okay, got to fix that. And so you can toggle it on and off, and we'll talk about why in just a second. But this custom one is what I map to the on-off switch. So anytime you turn the bank on or off, and I mean globally, the entire synth bank, um, it will send a sustain kill message so that you don't run into that issue on a global scale as opposed to on a single bank scale, if you follow uh, what I'm putting down here. So um, that means I can be playing piano, turn off the bank, still got piano, Turn back on the bank, no sound, but then the synth returns whenever you, you know, play the next chord or whatever. Okay, I think that's all for this rack. Let's look at this keys rack. And this I've got set up using a very similar, uh, you know, pre-mapped instrument rack. But in this case, I don't have device on off mapped. This way you can allow notes to hang over. So I've toggled off the sustain kill on patch change. And I'm, I don't believe, I, I guess you could, I will leave that mapped to the on off for my keys bank. So it, this is a, you know, very similar to my live setup as well, where I have a uh, grand piano and upright piano on one button. So one tap gives me grand, two taps gives me upright. Oh, I still got my synths on, um, just the upright now. Okay, uh, move over to this button. One tap gives me whirly. Beautiful. Uh, two taps gives me roads. Okay, so that way I can, uh, you know, be holding a chord on piano, for example, and then come back in on whirly, and I don't have to worry about sustain. Just beautiful, you know, uh, cross fading between patches, essentially, um, and that's because I have sustain kill toggled off, and that that's what you'd want um, if you're using this bank. Um, but I wouldn't recommend building this too thoroughly, like maybe two patches per bank and maybe a maximum of four patches. It really depends on what your computer can handle. But obviously, the more instruments you add to a bank like this, the more your CPU is going to ramp up. But as you can see, I have quite a, uh, quite a lot of stuff loaded, and uh, I'm only at 5%. Boom. Um, another kind of fun use is in an, uh, is in an audio track. Um, in this case, I've got one button uh, is going to do nothing. Two buttons is going to send to a delay. Sorry, two taps. One tap, nothing. Two taps, delay. 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 Three taps, Three taps. Three taps. Three taps. Three taps. Saturation. saturation. Right, so it's turning on the saturator. One tap turns it off. Turning on the saturator before the delay, and I have that all just mapped um, using these custom, you know, very simple uh, macro maps. Of course, if you were to look at the macro maps for this rack, um, woo, lots of stuff going on there. Um, Anyways, uh, the only other thing left to really talk about here is this tap window. So, you know, the, the banks that I built only have four patches within each one because it's pretty impractical even to go above three, in my opinion. Um, you know, a quick triple tap is doable, but four taps and you're thinking too hard and it's distracting. Um, but you can try it if you want. If you want, though, if you want to do four or more, you want to expand the tap window to, you know, 300, 400, 500, 1,000, whatever. Those are milliseconds, of course. Um, so where are we? We're at synth. If I tap bank one once, I get one. If I tap it as many times as I can, I got 12 within one second, right? So obviously, if you're really good at counting and tapping really fast, then maybe that's useful to you. But I like to keep the tap window around 200, um, and I usually aim to just build patches with three, uh, uh, you know, three patches per bank, basically. Um, yeah, hopefully this is inspiring. Um, this plugin has totally transformed the way that I perform. I never look at my computer. I'm completely focused on my keyboard, just playing. I have all sorts of sounds accessible on this tiny little 61 key MIDI board, which I put on my back and ride the subway with. Um, so yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of my dream setup. Obviously there are tons of pluses to using hardware keyboards like Nords or whatever. Um, but I'm kind of a nerd and I love to build my own sounds. And so this is like the perfect way to do that and still feel like it's organic and it's uh, it's it, I'm not distracted by a screen. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, but there you go. That's on tap. Enjoy.